My eyes bugging me. Up next, a look at King Me, a family weight game based on checkers or drafts. Uh, King Me was designed by Prospero Hall. No, that's not one person. It's a development team. And published by Ravensburger in 2019. Plays with only two players. And the game takes under an hour. Um, I think Board Game Geek says 45 minutes. I think I finished in under half an hour as well. Uh, the time is very much, though, based on how much thinking time the players take, much like in an actual game of checkers. All right, well, to see what you get with a copy of King Me, check out our unboxing video over on YouTube. I had some help with this one, so I think this one's worth checking out. I personally think it's kind of cool because uh, we picked up this game from Ravensburger for my youngest birthday, and I actually had her help me with the unboxing video. So you guys should get to see her thoughts on what the different components are like and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Though I do apologize for uh, way too much brightness in the first half of the video. I didn't notice it right away. Now, I'm not going to go through all the components you get here. Uh, you can see that over on the blog or in the unboxing video, but I will say I was impressed by the quality of everything. Uh, from the plastic checkers that are actually unique, the red are different than the black, that's a nice touch. The mounted board, uh, the thick tiles, everything was top-notch, perfectly fine. All right. No complaints. Well, so what is King Me all about? We know it's based on checkers. How are things different here? All right, well, in King Me, the black player is supposed to be a kingdom that's on the board, and the red player is supposed to be an invading army. Uh, the black pieces even have, like, a little castle on them where the red pieces have a boat, which is kind of neat. Uh, the board is checkered, so light and dark squares, and but it's divided up into a number of different regions and different sections of the board that are denoted by color and artwork. So, like, you'll have a black and gray area, you'll have a red and lighter red area, um, and they all look different. So, like, they're, they're kind of themed, like the red's volcanic or whatever. Uh, the board is completely symmetrical, which is kind of important. So, despite having different colors, there, there are an identical number on each half of the board. Now, players start with 12 checkers. Uh, they're placed on campsites, and this, again, is supposed to represent the two armies about to clash. Then you have a deck of adventure, ad event cards that are shuffled and placed on the appropriate spot. So that's that's the, the basic setup. Uh, just like checkers, the red player starts. All right, well, with different areas and cards, we're certainly veering well away from a common game of drafts. Yeah, it is definitely definitely a different game. So first off, one of the biggest changes is each turn you're going to move two pieces. Now, normally this is two different pieces, but one of your kings, if you have a king, can be moved twice in a row. Movement is what you'd expect from checkers with diagonal only, though in King Me, any checker can be moved in any diagonal. You don't have to always go forward. And it's not just the kings that can go backwards. You can jump over your own pieces as well, which is a good way to move further or faster along the board. Plus, the board has some pre-printed checkers on it that you can jump over those as well. Well, it certainly sounds like a, a whole lot more additional complexity added in. All right, so when jumping, if you jump over an opponent's checker, you capture it. If you jump over an opponent's king, you get to steal their crown and make your piece of king. Now, about the crowns. Now, instead of having to reach the opponent's edge of the board, there are four spots on the board that hold crowns, and each of them takes up two board pieces. And the first person to land in either one of those two squares gets to take that crown and become a king. And it's neat. You flip your piece over and it actually snaps on, and the crowns are all different, unique looking, so the four crowns look different. I thought that's cool. Now, kings have the ability to move twice in a row, they break ties during scoring, which we'll get to a bit, and they count as two pieces for scoring, but only in three of the different terrain types. So each king specializes in three different terrain types, and of course it's well laid out, so it's not near where you get the crown. They specialize in terrain types that are further away. Now after your player takes your two moves, you then resolve the current event card if there is any. This card is either going to show a river and a number um, or a terrain type. Now, on the board, I hadn't mentioned the rivers before. There are two circular rivers, one on the far left of the board, one on the far right. And any time a river card comes up as an event, all the checkers on the river are going to move clockwise around the board, one or two spaces. Now, the terrain type cards cause scoring. There's one terrain type card for each of the terrains on the board. Uh, top of my head, I couldn't tell you how many. I'm going to guess about 12. Um, each card shows its terrain type identified by both color and symbol, like I mentioned before, like red or black. And then a number of points for each side. So what red scores may be different than what black scores. And that depends on how deep on the opponent's side of the board the terrain is. So for the terrain that's like right next to your starting area, it's going to score your opponent 20 points if they claim it. But you only get five if you claim it yourself. Because, well, it's right there next to you. 
Now, to claim one of these, we do a full uh, area majority thing. So it's whoever has the most checkers in that terrain type when the card's up wins. And remember, kings break ties, and kings can also count as two checkers in their favorite terrain. Every terrain card also causes the rivers to move one spot. So uh, timed area majority scoring, pretty straightforward enough. Yep, pretty much. After resolving the event card, all the cards in the event row slide down and a new card's revealed. The game ends after the last card in the deck is resolved, which is important because every terrain is going to score. Every game. So there's no random one spots out. Now at the end of the game, you're going to add up your points. So first off, you're going to get your points for your terrain tiles. You're going to get five points for every king you currently have at the end of the game and five points for every one of your opponent's pieces you've captured. Player with the most points wins. So, Checkers 2020, the game we knew, brought into the modern world of hobby gaming. Now, I have to say, Prospero Hall has really been knocking their products mm -hmm. out of the park time and time again. Yeah, and th this is another example of it, because this is an awesome update to the classic game. Like, he takes the basic mechanics of Checkers and improves on them in many ways. For one, the ability to move all your pieces forward and backwards just like explodes the number of possible moves. You're, you're, you just got way more options. The ability to jump over not only the enemy, but your own pieces and those static ones in the board really gives you a lot of mobility. Like there's some really quick moves you can do to get across the board quickly. And then there's the whole diving into the river at the right time and trying to time that. But the biggest thing, though, that really improves in the game is it's not just about taking all of your opponent's pieces off the board. It's that area majority scoring mechanic. And to me, that's what makes the game shine. Yeah. So drafts or checkers, as we mentioned in the past episodes, is a solved problem. If you input a starting yes. si uh, thing, there is a known solution to that problem or a calculable solution. Yeah. I personally love the strategy in this game. Now, strategy is long-term planning. That's that's having to plan ahead. Um, what I'd like is that event row takes five turns before something's resolved, so you get to see it coming. And that gives you plenty of time to try to get your pieces into position and jockey for spots. Seeing how the river's going to move and then using those to get your pieces into the right spot can also be key to it. And then... There's also some tactical thinking because you have to react to what your opponent's doing, which is just so much more than you're going to see in a checkers game. Right. It really takes it from being a straight gotcha conflict game to that whole other level of actual strategy. Yeah. Now, the best part about all this, despite being highly strategic and tactical, is it's also approachable. It's still basically checkers. Uh, this is dead simple to teach and play. Both my kids, um, now 8 and 12, perfectly got it like not only they know how to play but they they can know how to play well they can see the strategy they can plan ahead they know how how to actually play it and actually my oldest is getting to be a bit of a ringer in this one um she's beaten me now more often than not so and this is also a simple enough game that the kids can break it out and play it on their own without myself or deanna having to teach watch or moderate in any way which is great yeah it's always a bonus when you can have a good solid game with real and not childish mechanics that the kids can and will play on their own yeah and they're loving it like they they are really enjoying it uh this morning um grace actually taught deanna how to play for the first time and was looking forward to teaching her mom a new game so that was pretty cool now i'll admit she was a little bummed out when she got destroyed by deanna for her first <laughs> game especially after beating me the other day but uh that that's something that happens i gotta say if you are a fan of checkers just pick this up like unless unless you love the purity of checkers and nothing should mess with my game checkers like which i'm sure there are checker fans out there but if you enjoy a casual game of checkers pick this game up if you like abstract strategy games, you're probably going to dig this. This is a really neat, yes, there's a theme here, but this is a neat evolution of it. If you like area majority, this is probably going to be a winner. Like, no, this is no El Grande, but for something simpler with that, that whole, I need to get my pieces there and make sure I outnumber you, it's all right there. And if you're looking for games to play with the entire family, as well as something that, like, I could easily bring this out 
I, with Charles, who is a, I don't know if he's a chess master, but like plays chess a lot competitively and probably have a great game of this with Charles. Not that I, I haven't had a chance. If we weren't in quarantine, I would totally play a game of this with Charles just to see how well he could do it. And I think we're both going to enjoy it just as much as I am going to playing with my kids. I think it's a great game to look if you are into looking for a game to play with, with, with family members as well as gamers. Now, unless you hate checkers, which, you know what? Uh, some people possibly do. I think everyone should at least try this game. Like I, to me, I have heard no buzz about this game. When 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 we went shopping for for Gigi's birthday, and I was looking at Ravensburger games, I had picked out Villainous and I had picked out Woodlands, and I was kind of like, I don't know, this King Me game, I guess. And like I have heard nothing about this game. No one's talking about this game, possibly because it's a family weight game. And I will say, it's, it's not specifically a kids game. It is a family weight game. It's not aimed at kids. It's aimed at families. And like no one's talking about. It. I haven't heard anyone on a podcast talk about King Me ever. And I think it's just getting completely overlooked. And I I think that's a shame. All right, well, for a more in-depth look at King Me, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.